Hey guys, so as of when I'm tracking this, I had just finished recording drums for the latest Three Points of Madness album. Uh, I used this massive 18 microphone setup. There's a lot here that I could talk about, uh, but what I really wanted to discuss today was mid-side room micing. We're gonna do a deep dive in this. We're actually gonna do a lot of sound samples so you can get a sense as to how this affects the sound and you know how you can use this to improve the quality of your recordings. Uh, but before we get into that, we're going to do a little bit of, you know, discussion on what is mid-side room micing and why do we want to do room micing at all. So before we get into talking about a mid-side room mic setup, I first want to talk about why I want to use room mics at all. Uh, you know, I do have a lot of direct mics. I have six drums and I have all of the drums double mic'd, so top and bottom side. And I have a direct mic on my hi-hat and my ride, and I have overheads as well. And you would think that would be enough, and why do I also need to have other mics? Well, I have in this, the room I'm set up in, I have, the ceilings are actually kind of low. And so I don't get a lot of, you know, natural reverberation uh, in, in the mix as a result. You know, even from the overheads, I mean, the overheads I have are great, they're earthworks. But you know, because they're so low, I don't quite get back as much of that natural reverberation. And when you're really, you know, cutting the, the drums up a lot, you end up missing that. So for a while, I was using a kit mic and a separate far room mic. So as the kit mic, I was kind of using what I had left over. So I used a Royer, an R121, pretty close to my, my kit. And then I don't know if it was maybe 12 feet away, I had a condenser mic, a Rode NT1A. And this helped out quite a bit. It allowed me to kind of feather in more natural reverberation. You know, it, it allowed me, to, it was almost like a glue, right? I, I was able to kind of put back in some of that natural feel while still having, you know, a really clean sounding kit, you know, by just bringing in as much of that kit mic and a mu as much of that far room mic as, as I wanted. This time, however, I was looking to try to, you know, change things up a little bit for my next recording session. I had already done a couple of little upgrades. I upgraded my hi-hat and ride mic. I upgraded my fourth tom uh, topside mic, but I was looking into some different possibilities on room mics. So that's when I got into this whole mid-side mic thing. So I basically took back the two channels I was using for the kit mic and the far room mic, and actually those same microphones, and I'm using those as the mid side microphone setup. Now, usually in a mid side setup, you would use two of the same mics or two mics that have the same sort of characteristic, you know, the same sort of, you know, mid scoop or high boost, the same sort of sound that you would want on both microphones. Um, I didn't have that exactly available to me uh, based on just what I have um, in my setup. So I just went with these microphones and I still think it's actually going to even though they're kind of, you know, the leftover mics per se, I think it's still going to improve my sound from what I had before. Okay, so let's talk about what is a mid-side setup. So it is when you have two microphones. One is the mid, which is, you know, recording the middle of the room. And one is the side, recording the sides of the room. Your mid has to be a cardioid mic or some microphone if it has a changeable pickup pattern, you set it to cardioid and the side needs to be in figure eight. Um, and so that's why my, uh, my leftover microphone of the Royer had to be one of those microphones because it's one of the only mics that I have in the setup in my, my studio that is a figure eight mic. So as you can see, I have the microphones are actually almost touching. They're right over each other. And that's because you want them to basically be the same exact distance from the drums. So my mid mic, that's the NT1A, that's facing the drums. And the Royer, I have it, you know, from the drummer's perspective, it's pointing left. So it's pointing to the, the left side of the room. I'd say the top of the Royer is about maybe 55 inches up. Uh, in this sort of setup, what you actually want to do is you want to have the, the diaphragms of the microphone. I guess you could say you want them in level with like the drummer's head. So when you st sit down at the kit and you're looking at the mics, you want to be, you know, you don't want to be looking up or looking down. You want, you know, the, the combined diaphragms to be, you know, where your head is. As far as distance, 
Uh, you know, it can vary. This is actually where you're going to have to play around with, with taste combined with what you have available for your room. So I have them about, it's about maybe 72 inches away. I actually have more distance. I could push them further back, but this is, I, I figured this would be a good starting point. I saw some, some people saying five to six feet away. Um, so I, I went a little bit further than that with the 72 inches. Uh, but on some sample recordings that I had done before I got started, it sounded pretty good to me. And just as a note, the microphones, the preamps that they're going into, they're just these, uh, you know, basic tube preamps. I, I definitely wanted to have the same preamp sound since I couldn't get the same microphones, wanted the same preamp, preamp sound. Uh, these are actually, it's an old Behringer um, set of tubes that when I first got them, they sounded terrible, but I swapped out the tubes with a tongue sole. I believe it's called, and they sounded significantly better. Okay, so what is what is the magic? What this is the kind of the special thing that happens with this kind of setup? You know, it, it seems kind of weird, right? Where you have like one microphone facing away from the drums. So what you actually do, how you actually set this up, is that you have one, like I said, you have one mic that's facing the drums. You're gonna put that right at the middle of the pan. The other mic, you're actually gonna duplicate it. You're gonna have two copies of that mic after, after you track in post-production. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the original, right? So whichever one is, whichever way it's facing, right? So in my case, drummer's pers perspective is facing left. I'm gonna pan that original track hard left. Then the copy, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna pan that one hard right, and I'm gonna invert the face. Then I'm gonna, uh, get those two faders for those two tracks. I'm going to lock them together. So as I bring them up and down, uh, the volume stays the same between the two. So that mid mic, it's obviously going to have a more direct sound of the drums, right? It's going to it's going to sound like how the drums sound more naturally, right? Like like the attack of the cymbals and everything is going to be hitting it pretty hard. And the the side is going to give you a more distant sound by having that in. And then what you can do on post is basically just blend the two. You know how. How distant do you want it to be? How much direct sound do you do you need? You, you basically just add the two in for flavor. Now, what really gets interesting with this setup is actually what happens when the tracks get folded together for mono. So the mid is left alone. It's, it's the same in both sides, right? But the side mic, remember we panned one hard left and then we inverted it and panned the other hard right. So when you fold that together, it's actually going to cancel out and they'll, then you'll be left with just the mid. So in a sense, this way you're kind of controlling a bit what's going to happen to the sound when you go down to mono, right? You're not going to have all this phase cancellation that you didn't intend and be left with, you know, a drum sound where you just can't hear anything. In this case, we're still going to have some, um, you know, for people who are not listening on a better sound system, you're still gonna have some of that sound effect. We're controlling what kind of phase can cancellation that we're going to work with. All right, so let's actually get into some of these sound samples. I'm gonna play a bunch of beats and what you're gonna hear is on the playback, I'm gonna change what's going on with the, the, the room mics. Um, so just so you can get a full kind of sense as to the sound of everything, I'm gonna start off with just the mid and then the side and then we're going to go with some combinations of mid and side with the full mix so you can hear how changing the blend of them affects the overall sound
So I hope you guys found that useful. I hope if you are recording drums yourself, um, either because you're a drummer or you're just running a studio and you have to track for drums, I hope that you found this useful. I have other videos as well that I, I'm putting out all the time, you know, for other, you know, gear review for, you know, microphones and for your drums, how to do certain things like, you know, parallel compression and all that stuff. So I have all sorts of goodies that you can check out. Um, if there's other stuff that you guys are interested in, let me know uh, in the comments below. I'd love to, uh, you know, shoot a video for anything that you guys are interested in as well. Um, other than that, you know, please don't forget to subscribe. That's the only way you're going to be able to check out all these videos as they come out. Until next time, peace.